Man musste hinaufgehen. Der Schlauch war geheißt Himmel weg, nicht? Die Juden haben ihn genannt Himmelfahrtsweg, dann der letzte Weg. Ich habe nur zwei Namen gehört. Ich muss Die vorstellen, sagen. die Leute eintreten im Schlauch. Und was passiert? Ganz nackt. Ganz nackt. Hier standen zwei ukrainische Wachmänner. Ja. Also hauptsächlich für die Männer. Gell? Die Männer, wenn ich gern gegangen sind, dann sind sie geschlagen worden. Stand mit der Peitsche, mit der Peitsche. Und auch hier. Hier schon, gell? Ah ja. Die Männer sind getrieben worden. Die Frauen nicht. Die Frauen waren nicht geschlagen? Nein, nein die sind nicht geschlagen worden. Warum, also ich warum habe diese, nicht, diese Menschlichkeit? Ich habe, es, ich habe es nicht gesehen. Okay? Ja. Ich habe es nicht gesehen. Vielleicht sind sie auch geschlagen worden. Warum nicht? Warum nicht? Äh, sowieso, es war tot, nicht? Hm? Warum nicht? Hm? Vor den Gasklammern. Sicher auch. Abraham, can you tell me how did it happen? How were you chosen? They came in order from the Germans to take out the barbers they could get. And they need them for a certain job. What kind of job they needed for it, we didn't know at that time. But we gathered together as many barbers as we could. How long did it happen after you arrived in Treblinka? So that, I would say that would help me about uh, four weeks after I was in Treblinka. When was it? It was in the morning? In the... Uh, that was in the morning. That was around 10 o'clock when a transport came to Treblinka and the woman went into the gas chambers. And they chose some people from the working people over there, and they asked question who was a barber, who was not a barber. I was a barber for uh, quite a number of years. And some of them, they knew me, like from people from Chancellorova and from uh, other places. So naturally, they chose me, and I selected some more barbers, which I know of them, and we got it together. Professional barber. Official, yes. We got it together, and we're waiting for the order. And the order came to go with them, with the Germans. They took us in to the guest chamber to the second part of the camp in Treblinka. It was far from the first part? It was not too far, but it was all covered with gates, barbed wires, 
and trees covering the gate. That sh nobody should see there is a gate or there is a place going in to the gas chamber. Is it what the Germans call the Schlauch? No, the Germans, what they call, they call like going to road to the heaven. Himmelweg. Himmel, Himmelweg, yeah, the road to the heaven. And we know about it because we worked for quite a time before we went in to work in the gas chamber. Going up in over there, they put in some benches where the women could sit and not to have the idea that this is the last way or that is the last time they're going to live or they're going to breathe or they're going to know what is going on. How long did it last that the barbers cut the hair inside the gas chamber? Because it was not always the case. We worked inside the gas chamber for about a week or 10 days. After that, they decided that we will cut the hair in the undressing barrack. How did it look, the gas chamber? It was a room, not a big room. The room was, I would say, the size by feet, around 12 by 12. But in that room, they pushed in a lot of women, almost one on top of the other one. But like I mentioned before, when we came in, we didn't know that what, what we're going to do. And then one of the couples, they came in and said, Barbers, you have to do a job to make to believe all those women that came in that they're just taking a haircut and going in to take a shower, and from there they go out from this place. But we know already that there is no way going out from this room, because this room is the last place where they went in alive and they will never go out alive again. Uh, can you describe precisely? Precisely to describe is when the transport came in, waiting there until the transport came in. The transport came in, women with children and uh, pushing in to that place. We, the barbers, started to cut the hair, and some of them. I wouldn't say all of them. Some of them, they knew already what's going to happen to them. We tried to do the best what we could. No, 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 no. The no. most human being what we could. Excuse me, how did it happen when the woman came and entered the gas chamber? Were you yourself already in the gas chamber or did in you come afterwards? I, I said we were already in the gas chamber. Because we were waiting over there for the transport to come in. You were inside? Inside, yes. Inside the gas chamber. We were already in. And suddenly you saw the woman coming? Yes, they came in. How were they? They were undressed, all naked, without clothes, without anything else. All of them completely naked? Completely naked. <laughs> All the women and it all the children. And the children too. The children too. Because they came from the undressing barracks. There was barracks before going into the gas chamber where they had undressed themselves. What did you feel the first time that it happened that you saw all these naked women coming? Well, I felt that accordingly, I got to do what they told me to cut the hair in a way that it should look like a barber is doing this job, like he's doing a job for a woman, a nice haircut to give them, both to take off as much hair as we could, because they needed the woman's hair 
to be transported to Germany. This means that you didn't shave them. No, we did not shave them. We just cut the hair, make the believe that they're getting a nice haircut. But you cut with what? With scissors? With scissors, yes. With scissors and with comb, without any clippers. Just like uh, a men's haircut, I would say. Not a, not a body one to take out, to take off all the hair, but just to have the imagination that they're getting a nice haircut. There were no mirrors, no? No, there were no mirrors. There were just benches, not chairs, but just benches, where we worked about 16, 17 barbers. And we had a lot of women in. Every haircut, it took about two minutes. No more than that, because there was a lot of women to come in and to get rid of the hair. Can you imitate now? How did you do? Well, how we did? We did as fast as we could, because uh, we were quite a number of uh, professional barbers. And the way we did, we just stopped this and this, and we cut, and we just cut this like this, here and there and there, and this side and this side, and the head was all finished. With big movements. With big, naturally, with big movement, because we could not waste any time. The other party was waiting already outside, coming in to do the same thing, the same uh, job, the same procedure. You said that you were 16 barbers. Yes. Uh, about. This means you cut the hair of how many women in one batch? And one patch, they uh, was about, I would say, going into that place between 60 and 70 women in the same room at one time. And afterwards, the doors of the guest chamber were closed? After that, we were finished with this party. Another party came in, and it was around about 140, 150 women. You they were... all were already taken care of. They told us to leave the guest chamber for a few minutes, about five minutes, where they put in the gas and they chucked them to death. Where did you wait? Outside the guest chamber. And on the other side, where on this side the woman went in, and the other side was a group working people, which they took out already the dead bodies. Some of them, they were not exactly dead. They took him out, and in two not even two minutes, in one minute everything was clear. And it was clean to take in the other party of the other woman to go through the same thing what the first one they went through. But Tell me, the, uh, this woman, they had long hair? Uh, most of them, they had long hair, they had short hair, but we had to do the job to get rid of the hair. Like I mentioned that, the Germans, they needed the hair for their purposes. But I have asked you and we didn't answer, what was your uh, impression the first time you saw arriving this naked woman with children? What did you feel? I tell you something, to have a feeling over there it was very hard to feel anything or to have a feeling. Because working there day and night between the people, between their bodies, Men and women, your feeling disappeared. You were dead with your feeling. You had no feeling at all. And matter of fact, I want to tell you something what it happened. At the guest chamber, when I was chosen in over there to work as a barber, some of women that came in from a transport from my town, from Transtochova. And from the women, from the number of women, I know a lot of people. You knew them? I know them. I live with them in my town. I live with them in my street. And I was, some of them, they were my close friends. And when they saw me, all of them started hogging me. Abe, this and that, what are you doing here? What's gonna help me with us? What could you tell them? What could you tell a friend